In this mastery lesson, we'll take a closer look at the three classes of intravenous medications used to treat acute decompensated heart failure patients, diuretics, vasodilators, and inotropes. Loop diuretics are the main treatment for patients with fluid overload, so warm and wet or cold and wet patients. It's important to start IV diuretics right away when patients arrive in the emergency room with acute decompensated heart failure. You can give either a continuous infusion or a bolus every 12 hours, as these are equivalent. The goal for urine output is 3 to 5 liters per day, even if the patient remains symptomatic, but be sure to watch for electrolyte disturbances. Ensure the patient is compliant with salt and water restriction or the diuretics aren't going to work. If the patient is resistant to diuretics, you can double the dose every two hours and add a thiazide diuretic if necessary. For congested patients who are unresponsive to aggressive diuretics, we sometimes consider ultrafiltration or hemodialysis, which will remove fluid but does not preserve renal function the way diuretics do. It's an expensive treatment and should only be considered in diuretic-resistant patients who are hemodynamically stable. Recall that IV vasodilators are used temporarily to decrease the afterload and increase the stroke volume to help get warm and wet or cold and wet patients out of the acute episode. Patients will feel better and might be able to leave the hospital sooner, but these medications have no impact on outcomes. Nitroprusside is the most common IV vasodilator since it provides balanced arterial and venous dilatation, but it requires continuous blood pressure monitoring with an arterial line to make sure the dose is titrated appropriately. You also can stop this medication abruptly because it will send patients right back into acute decompensated heart failure. Nitroglycerin is another option. It reduces left ventricular filling pressures primarily by venodilation and at higher doses lowers afterload, but it also requires invasive monitoring with an arterial line. Nisiratide doesn't require such careful dose titration, but it's more expensive. Clavidipine is a short-acting calcium channel blocker that works similarly to nitroprusside, but is less expensive. It also requires continuous invasive monitoring because calcium channel blockers can exacerbate heart failure if they cause too much negative inotropic effects. It's important to start positive inotropes by IV as soon as possible for acute decompensated heart failure patients who aren't perfusing well, the ones that are cold and wet or cold and dry. These medications increase contractility and vasodilation. In patients classified as cold, organ perfusion is rapidly declining, kidney function is going to drop off and it might not be regained. Kidney dysfunction is an especially big risk factor for mortality, so we want to preserve perfusion to the kidney for as long as possible. Positive inotropes are also used for patients in cardiogenic shock, or as a temporary bridge for patients waiting for heart transplant or left ventricular assist devices. Lastly, positive inotropes can be used long-term for palliative care to enhance a patient's quality of life. However, positive inotropes are contraindicated in HEFPEF and any patients with adequate perfusion, the warm and wet and warm and dry patients. Examples of positive inotropes include dobutamine, milrinone, and dopamine. If you try one inotrope and you're not able to achieve optimized blood pressure and cardiac output, you can switch to a different one or add a second one. On a final note, when managing acute decompensated heart failure patients, always remember to titrate diuretics, vasodilators, and positive inotropes up to guideline-directed doses in order to maximize their effectiveness. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.